Uh, Representative Andy Biggs is here. Hey, man. Hey, hey, Jimmy. And I was just wondering if you'd like to be my food taster. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I don't know if you heard, but the wardrobe department doesn't want me having food. Uh, I was told I can't even I can't even get the gig. I can't even die for this cause I believe in. Uh, listen, man, uh, that will yeah. say if once I shoot my stand up special, it shoots next Friday. I was told they're going to take off the shock collar and let me have carbohydrates again. So uh, we can renegotiate. You know, what we can do we can we can put a motion forward to vacate whoever your food taster is between now and then. Um, I can't, you know, here's the deal. I, I can't find a uh, food taster. I can't keep them. Uh, they, they keep, they keep dying <laughs> they like keep flies. They keep dying on the gig. You can't advertise that big. You're going to have a hard time hiring. <laughs> Don't you understand? Yeah. Uh, oh. what a food fight you had yesterday. Speaking of food. So let's talk about this. Uh, I, I personally, and this is something I think that's lost on everybody hyperventilating right now in the media. You know, if Congress has an approval rating of 19%, it's not like Matt Gates broke up the Beatles yesterday. <laughs> hey, I'm surprised. It's not 19%. I think cockroaches have a higher uh, uh, favorability rating than we do right now. Well, but, it depends uh, on your exterminator. It's, it's within the margin of error, though. It's within the yeah, margin of right. error. That, that's right. No, no. I mean, you're exactly right. It isn't like it isn't like people were looking at Congress saying, "You guys doing a heck of a job, great stuff, good work, keep it up." No, they're all everywhere you go on the right or the left. They're like, "What's wrong with you idiots?" And um, and I could tell you what's wrong with this, but but you don't. Your show doesn't even last that long every day. But there are so many things wrong here, and not the least of which is. Uh, the the ultimate job we're supposed to do is pass a budget. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not even I'm I I, I would I, I'm not even asking that you pass a balanced budget. I'd li I'd like you just see if you could pass a budget out. Mm -hmm. You know, twelve bills. We we passed the law. The Congress passed the law in 1974 before before you were born, not before mm -hmm. me. But they passed this law that says you do this, and Congress ignores it every year. That is fascinating. I, I, can I give you a data point? You're going to like this, yeah, this we'll data point. Last 25 years, last 25 years, continuing resolution, which is a continuing resolution is where you monolithically take the budget that's going on and you just pass it. Mm. Um, you might increase it, but you just keep pa you pass it and you keep all the policies in place, all the spending. It's just monolithic. You can't consider stuff separately. Uh, you know, that's rare to do that. Last 25 years, 130 CRs. 130 continuing wow. resolutions. That is bananas because you're $33 trillion in debt, and we're essentially just saying, well, we're going to keep spending at this level or higher. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's where you look at and you go to the mirror and you say, I'm going to start. Well, I, I, this is not directed at you, Jimmy. This is directed sure, at me. It's I'm not. going to start the diet tomorrow. <laughs> every, every night. As you, as you stand there with a bowl, you know, a half yeah. gallon of ice cream in your hand and a, and a big mouth spoon there. You know, I'm going to start tomorrow. But in the case of Congress, it's I'm going to start in 45 days. It's not <laughs> exactly. even tomorrow. It's even worse it, exactly. than tomorrow. So, all right, I get so on the data side it makes sense. But when McCarthy said it was all personal from Gates, what percentage of it really was personal? Just speculating. I don't think any of it really was, to be to be frank with you. I, I know I know Matt probably as well as anybody in Congress knows him. I mean, we're we're yeah. good friends, really mm -hmm. good friends, and we talk. And I, I've never I've never heard him say I got I got to get rid of Kevin because he's such a you know mm -hmm. he's attacking me personally. He's facil I've never heard that. Okay, that's just that's just outrageous. What we've talked about is. How do we make this place better? How do we make it work better? How do we get it back to work? Uh, I don't think any of it was. was well, perfect. let me ask you this. When you hear McCarthy say, you know, he was assured by Pelosi that she'd have his back. And that's why, you know, he he could get the speakership by maintaining that one vote threshold, essentially. Um, was McCarthy dumb for trusting Pelosi? That's not why he was dumb. OK, <laughs> that's just that's you know that's that's the old um does this does this dress make me look fat no uh -huh. honey it's not the dress <laughs> oh no <laughs> you, you cannot you cannot say that i mean there there were so many problems uh with kevin let's let's talk about the debt ceiling can mm -hmm. we just talk about that give it a minute so so he he input, wants to impose a 1.5 tri trillion 1.5 trillion dollar uh national debt increase over an 8 month period right mm -hmm. 
So um, people like me, four of us, three other people plus me, said, that's ludicrous. And he was saying, this is my starting point. This is how I'm anteing into the poker game to go negotiate with Schumer and Biden. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's ridiculous. And so he goes there, and he comes back, you know, two or three days later, and what do you think it is? There is no debt ceiling anymore. No debt ceiling in this country anymore. And it, the next time you bring it up is January 2025, after the presidential election. Both of those things were exactly what Joe Biden said he wanted. Wow, that is crazy. We're talking to Arizona Representative Andy Biggs about the chaos in Congress, which personally I don't think matters in the long term. If you guys get a new House speaker and you maintain the power of the purse and you actually do something productive with spending, I don't think come Election Day 2024 people are going to go, well, the country's doing better. But, you know, there was that one week in October of 2023. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, I mean, your, your point that that you know uh, the the country's not saying don't break up the band. You know, yeah. no, they 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 would like to see change. Yeah. They want to see change. Um, I, I get it. That some people say, well, it's too conflictual. You guys, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you just need to be um, kinder and reach across and mm-hmm. and basically, as you're going off, you know, in, uh, you're in the tank. You're in the tank in that Indiana Jones movie, and Indy Je- and Jones fighting that dude on the tank. They were, d- stop fighting on the tank as it's going off the cliff. Go embrace that guy. <laughs> well, listen. He's, be a lover, not a fighter. And in this day and age, as long as the tank is electric, uh, we're okay. <laughs> it's, we're, as it goes over the cliff. Make sure it's Subs- not a fossil Subsidized. Tank. Yes, thank Subsidized you. by everyone. A That's subsidized right. solar-powered tank is where this is headed. Uh, Biggs, give me this. Um Did anyone in the McCarthy camp consider pulling the fire alarm during yesterday's proceedings to interrupt? (laughs) No. Uh, Thankfully, no. I think that, you know what, I'm going to say this in in all seriousness. Um, I think McCarthy, when he spoke to the conference last night, was probably as gracious as as you could be under the circumstance. I thought he was was incredibly gracious. Uh, You know, he was... He he set the tone. I thought he did okay, you know. Uh-huh. Um, but no, I didn't see that. But I I don't know if I told you this, Jimmy. Mm-hmm. So on Saturday, we're going to vote for that monstrosity. Uh, see another monolithic yeah. CR, and uh, seven or eight people have been kind of. We've just been kind of shooting the breeze in my office, talking about stuff. And we go walking out, and we go to a door, the door we always go to. And there's I don't know. There's a big sign that says, "No exit today," or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. And then there's two other signs behind it. And so we left. Yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds later, that is the exit Jamal Bowman went to and decided that he Stop had to pull it. the fire alarm. No kidding. Stop it. No kidding. The I'm re- not kidding you. I, let, me, let me give you some horse sense on why I, I think his story is not legit. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, there's a million reasons why beyond yeah. the, you know, yeah. the reality that no one – the people know what a fire alarm is. It says fire on it, and we never pulled open doors. We can, get, we can get into all of that. But the fact that he distributed talking points the morning after – I was saying this on Gutfeld the other night. Okay, you look at it outside of Congress. If four married guys go out for drinks, the only time they're coordinating their story the following morning is if they went somewhere they weren't supposed to be. You dig? Yes. It's if yes. The, the missus is going to come down with a reign of terror. Wait, you were where? You know, and uh, that's, I think, what happened. If you're distributing talking points, it's because you can't tell the real story. Yeah, I, I mean... I, and, I mean, one of my favorites was when he first got caught. Mm-hmm. Is, it was, I thought it would open the door. That's the greatest thing in the world. I I think I thought that red button that said "pull if fire" uh-huh. would open the door. <laughs> well, you know, listen, he was a school. He was a I know, but he was a school principal in New York City. And if you've seen the state of education in New York City. It would be possible that he wouldn't know better, but come on. Give me a break. That's insane, oh. Biggs. Come on, <laughs> Biggs. This is why we can't great. have nice things. All That's right, give, right. That's right. Give me some inside baseball. Uh, we've got a lot of people vying for this gig now. Jordan threw his hat in the ring. Scalise threw his hat yep. in the ring. There are Trump rumblings as well. Uh, who's the early favorite? You know, I don't, I don't know. And I have to tell you, I'm, I'm now the pariah in conference. Me and Gates and the, the, the yeah, others. Yeah. Oh, so I can't even... I don't even want to suggest a name uh, that I might even like, even, even if, I don't, if I think, yeah, there's other people better, but I might like that person. If I were to suggest that name, mm-hmm. 
a hundred people would say, I'm not voting for that person because Biggs, Biggs mentioned Guilt by association. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. So. Fe- feelings are a little raw here. That is amazing. But it's amazing because the one thing, the lesson I think Republicans could have learned from all of this is the ability to play team ball, okay? They don't we don't have it, okay? Meaning, like, Pelosi got her party to vote 208 to nothing. She wasn't even there. She put in the call from California and was like, the boss lady says this. I mean, in truth, if McCarthy was a stronger speaker or had pursued, I think, more of the ideals that were expected of him, he probably could have survived this thing. Could he have not? Oh uh, yeah, I mean that's the whole thing. This doesn't happen. This doesn't happen if he doesn't screw up the debt ceiling. If he doesn't screw up the twelve bills. If he, you know, if he brings the bills. I mean, he just had to see to it that a couple of bills were brought to the floor. Yep. If he would have, if he would have released the January sixth video footage, uh-huh. all the things he said he would do. I mean, you know. Uh, yeah. then, then we never actually re- reach this point. And you know what happens? I, I said it last January. I wanted him to be the most successful speaker in history because if it was, I knew he'd be a, a conservative speaker, and I knew that the country would be getting back on the right track and we'd be trying to rein in the ridiculous uh, uh, aftermath, the results of the Biden administration. But it didn't happen. Lo and behold, he's off to that great Dancing with the Stars episode in the sky. Mm. Unbelievable. Mm. Well, at least they'll get the votes there. Um, last but not least, Biggs, and I'll let you go. Uh, one of the things that's coming up, I mean, is a hot topic in the 2024 election is, you know, Trump is obviously running away with this thing. He's up about 50. And one of the things people have told us is, you know, a main reason why DeSantis isn't closing the gap is, number one, Trump is just very formidable and has a hold on the party. Uh, But two, I was told within Congress he had likability issues. Was DeSantis cool or was he a guy that people didn't really hang out with? Well, you know, I, he was here for two years with me, and he was in the Freedom Caucus with me. So uh, I, I didn't have – I had one committee with him, I think. And, you okay. know, he was there. Uh-huh. And we just chit-chat now and then. Uh, I didn't think he – you know, people tell people say that, um, that he's a little bit aloof or something. Mm-hmm. But I never found that. Okay. I mean – Listen, he does good on my show, but to be fair, you do good on my show. So where's the bar? <laughs> Jim, Jimmy, it's because the host is so skilled. That will uh, the, make no debate about that. Maybe not yeah. at radio, but at other things, Biggs. I so can, who you know. is the, who, you know who is your host? I, mean, <laughs> uh, I always yeah. say this sounds like pirate radio. Like people tune in and they assume the real host is tied up in the corner. That's <laughs> but that's my superpower. The fact that I don't have one it makes me more relatable. You see, you throw yes. some academic yes. in this seat and he just yells at people all day with statutes. They fall asleep and drive off the road. I am Radio Rumble Strips. I'm keeping the American people awake, Biggs. You see? Oh, sorry. I fell asleep there for a second. Ah, that's um, enough out of you, Biggs. You know, yeah, yeah, you know that's a... Get him out of here. <laughs> Get him out. Good stuff, brother. We'll do it again sooner, right, pal? All right, Jimmy, man. Take You're the care, best. Buddy. There he goes. Andy Biggs on the Fighting 5th Congressional District. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.